You're listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast, episode number 75. Welcome to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. Business advice so easy, you'll feel like you're cheating. And now your host, Amy Porterfield. Hey there, Amy Porterfield here, and welcome to another episode of the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. I am thrilled that you're here, so thank you so very much for tuning in. Today, we are talking about a project management system I use in my business called Scrum, S-C-R-U-M. I'm going to tell you what Scrum is, why it's important, and how we use it inside my business. Specifically, I'm going to focus on smaller businesses using Scrum, including mine, because I really don't have a big team. I've been in business for a while, but I have one full-time employee, two part-time employees, and a handful of amazing contractors that help me with each of my big projects. We tend to go back to the same contractors again and again, so they feel like they're part of my team, but they're only part of my team during our big promotions. So I'm gonna teach you how to use Scrum if you have a really small team and you plan on using contractors to get the work done. Now, before we get there, I want to tell you about where I am in my business and kind of what's been going on. So at the time of this recording, we are right in the middle of a brand new promotion I put together all around the product Webinars That Convert. So Webinars That Convert is my brand new program. Obviously, you get what it's all about. It's all about building your business with webinars. And if you follow my content, you know that webinars are definitely my jam. I have been using webinars for many years. And I really do believe that the combination of webinars and Facebook ads have built my multi-million dollar business. I have no doubt that those two pieces, especially when used together, have skyrocketed my success. And so I finally, finally put out a product that really shows you from A to Z how to create a webinar system, not just a one-off webinar, but a webinar system in your business. I'm extremely proud of this product because I know that it can get results if you really do the work. I have no doubt in my mind. And it was a lot of fun to create it because there's so much that could go into a webinar system that could dramatically change how your audience interacts with you, how your audience responds to your offers. And of course, it will not only boost your email list, but it will boost your customers as well. Webinars sell when you do them right. So The reason I tell you that is because we recently had 651 people sign up for webinars that convert in the last six days, 651 people. Is that crazy or what? At least it feels very crazy in my head. Now, I loved putting this product together, so I'm really proud of those numbers. But one thing that has helped me reach that success, and we're not even done promoting. So if you want to go check out the product, you can go to amyporterfield.com forward slash WTC for webinars that convert. So amyporterfield.com forward slash WTC if you want to learn about my new webinar program. Now, the reason why I was excited to talk to you about Scrum today is we use Scrum throughout this entire process of the promo that I'm currently in. And we use it for all of my Profit Lab launches as well. Now, one thing that I do with each of my podcasts is I give you a free giveaway. And instead of creating a brand new free giveaway for this episode, I really wanted to focus back on one that if you didn't grab it yet, I want you to grab it. So many of you might already have it, but in episode number 62, I gave you my project plan. I showed you every single thing that went into my last promotion, which was the Profit Lab promotion. And that was a wildly successful launch as well. And I literally gave you every action we do in order to promote the program and to offer the program once it has been promoted. So like everything is in that project plan. Now, the reason why I thought that was still a really good giveaway for this episode is because inside Scrum, we put the project plan in there and it's called a backlog. We'll get to that in a second. So my backlog is my project plan. And I thought it would be really helpful to you to see what my backlog looked like. And I've already created that. So in order to get it, just go to amyporterfield.com forward slash 62 download. So amyporterfield.com forward slash 62 download. And you can download my project plan instantly to see every single step I take inside a big promotion. If you already got it, you're good to go. You're well on your way to scrumming your first project. So let's talk about scrumming your first project. 
Now, before we dive in, I want to thank our sponsor today, 99designs. Now, I'm such a huge fan of this company because they can take care of all your graphic needs. We're talking logos, social media cover images, website graphics, and so much more. So visit 99designs.com forward slash Amy and get a $99 upgrade for free. So let's jump back to our podcast. Let's talk Scrum. Now, the first time I was introduced to the system was through the book Scrum, and I will link to it in my show notes. Now, I will warn you that I personally feel that it's a little bit of a heavy, dry read. And there are a lot of examples from the military and from big software companies. And I just cannot relate to those examples because I have a really small business compared to any of those. And so I needed a little help getting through the book. I knew it was an important system that I wanted to implement in my business. I just didn't love the book. So what I did is I got it on audio through Audible And then in addition to that, I had the physical book in front of me and I listened while I followed along in the physical book. And I got through the book really quickly by doing that. And I like a physical book so I could take notes and highlight and all that good stuff. So I used both audio and the physical book to get through it quickly. And I really retained so much more information that way. Because usually if I get a book on audio, I tend to multitask. I'll work out while I'm listening to it or I'll do things around the house and you just can't do that with Scrum. So I needed to stay really focused. So I used both and I whipped through it. So if you need a little help, maybe try that tip. It really worked well for me. So I got through the book and then I started to apply it. And around that time, someone had given me a PDF, kind of like a handout that summarizes the book as well. And that was really valuable. So I'm going to link to that PDF in my show notes as well. So you've got all the information you need. Now, the reason why I wanted to do this episode is I thought it would be really valuable to you if you were interested in Scrum to see how it works, but also how I apply it to a small business and some of the adaptations I needed to make in order to make Scrum work really well inside a small team. So that's the value I can bring. Even if you read the book already or you're going to get the PDF from my show notes, you still want to pay attention here because I'm going to give you some tips and tweaks and tricks in order to help you implement it right away. So here's the deal. Scrum is a method designed to add energy, focus, clarity, and transparency to project planning and implementation. So energy, focus, clarity, and transparency. Now the term is taken from rugby and it's a formation. Scrum is a formation that a rugby team uses in order to restart the game. So each team gets in this certain formation and it's a scrum and that restarts the game. So I thought that was a really cool terminology for a project planning process as well. So it's all about high performing cross-functional teams. That's what scrum is all about. High performing cross-functional teams. Now, why do I use scrum? Well, I want to go over four key reasons why scrum can work really well inside your business too. The first thing it does is it increases your speed to completion. So we are able to get through projects so much faster now that we use Scrum. It also highlights performance and really pays attention to the work that people are getting done and gives them the ownership on that performance. Now, it also creates cross-functional teams and they're empowered to make decisions. And I'll show you why they're empowered to make decisions, but that's what Scrum does. And it fosters consistent communication. This is probably my favorite part of Scrum, and I'll tell you exactly how we use it during my promotions. But this constant communication allows us to make sure everything's working smoothly, and when it's not, we fix it instantly. So communication, to me, is like the most important thing inside Scrum. Now, I've had to adapt Scrum to work with a really small team. So the first thing is, obviously, most of us listening right now have really small teams, but even smaller budgets. So hiring a bunch of people is not always the answer. There's actually a Scrum team. So each time you start a new project, you're going to have a Scrum team. That Scrum team involves the product owner, the team, and the Scrum master. So product owner, team, and scrum master. Now the product owner takes the vision of the project and translates that into a product backlog. So the product owner takes the vision of the whole project 
and translates that into a product backlog. And that's why I wanted to remind you to download my project plan from episode number 62 because that is my product backlog. So amyporterfield.com forward slash 62 download will let you see exactly what my backlog looks like. So I see myself as the product owner. I have the vision for this entire project. And when I say project, in my case, I'm really talking about a big promotion or a big launch. So I have the overall vision and I know what needs to go into it. So I usually start that backlog and I just throw everything that I can think of into that backlog. And we'll talk about the backlog again in a moment. But then my team actually kind of gets in there and helps me shape it as well. So that's one adaptation that in the book, they don't really talk about the team helping with the backlog. But as a small team, my assistant's going to know things that I'm going to forget. Or I have a full-time project manager now. She's definitely going to want to add to that backlog. But I see myself as the product owner. Now, the team develops the product or completes the project envisioned by the product owner. So the team would likely be a lot of your contractors and then any of your employees that you have. So again, the team develops the product or completes the project envisioned by the product owner. And then the third role to me is the most important role, and that is the scrum master. So the scrum master does whatever it takes to make the scrum team successful such as removing obstacles, facilitating meetings, and always acting as a gatekeeper of the product backlog. So I've recently hired a full-time project manager, and my project manager is the scrum master, but I haven't always had a full-time project manager. In the past, I would hire somebody to act as my project manager just during launches, and I did that for a good two years. So just know that you do not have to have a full-time project manager to act as the scrum master. You can bring someone on to take that role. And then after that role, basically they go on and do other things. And then you schedule to have them come back when you're going to do another launch. So I would pay like a two month project fee to have somebody act as my scrum master in the past. And now I finally have hired someone, but just know this is something you grow into. I do not think you should be the scrum master. Most people listening to this episode have a small business and you are basically a one man or a one woman show with, let's say, a really small team. And so you might think, well, I think I need to be the project owner and the scrum master. And I want to caution you against that. I would love to see you hire somebody to be the scrum master during your next big promotion so that you do not have to be in the weeds with everything because that's how we get completely burned out. And I was definitely getting burned out when I was trying to fill both of those roles in the past. So this last launch was the first launch that I've had a full-time project manager. So I've had people on my team like Travinia was an amazing scrum master for the Profit Lab the last time I did it, but she's my assistant. So that meant we had to pull her off of a bunch of things and that creates a little bit of stress. And then in the past, I had hired someone to do it part-time for me just during my promotions. As I mentioned, now I'm repeating myself. But this last time with webinars that convert, I've had someone since the beginning of when we started planning that promotion till right now where we're right in the middle of it. And I've had a scrum master the entire time and it has taken so much stress off of me. Like, I don't necessarily know what's going on at every minute of the day with this launch. And that is a beautiful thing. And it's something that has taken me many, many years to work up to. Now, of course, we do regular meetings and so I get to be filled in. But in the moment, I don't need to know that something might not be working properly. Like, that is an amazing feeling. And I've never, ever felt it. So I think in a small way, I might be kind of behind the curve in that. Where my business is and the amount of money we generate and kind of what we've been able to do, I probably should have stepped out earlier, you know, years ago. I just wasn't able to. I just, I don't know. Something about maybe my personality, wanting to control everything. Let's have a little honest session here. I've probably had my hands in too much for too long. So I'm learning how to step out. And with a scrum master, it's kind of forced me to step out, and that's a beautiful thing. So the scrum master to me is the most important part of the whole scrum process. Now, I see the Scrum Master as the team captain, 
which is like the leader of the team and a coach, which that person's encouraging. And they've got that eagle eye to always watch who's doing what, how they're doing it, and if it's all working properly. So the team captain and the coach at the same time is who I see the scrum master being during a big promotion. Now, some of you might say, well, what if it's just me, Amy, like we talked about earlier? What if I can't afford to hire help? Well, one thing you need to consider is that you want to build in more time. So if you're putting together your backlog and then at a certain point with your backlog, you're going to start adding dates to it, like when everything's going to be due. Well, if it's just you and you're doing everything, then you've got to give yourself way more time because at the end, we'll talk about the fact that everything takes longer than we think it should. Can I get an amen? I mean, that definitely is something that shows up in my business all the time. I say I can get it done in three days, 10 days later, and I'm just getting it done. So because of that, you want to give yourself more time with that backlog. But at the same time, I want you to consider your limiting beliefs. If you believe that it can only be you and maybe a few hours a week with a VA, I want to challenge you because it should never be all you. You should always have a little bit of help. And if you want to generate more revenue in your business, you're likely going to first need to get the support in order to build something that can generate revenue at the level you want it to. I get it that it's like the chicken and the egg kind of thing. If you don't have money that's coming in for your business, how are you supposed to pay somebody? But you can always get creative. You can always trade. So, hey, I'll help you here if you help me there. You can always think of how can I do a quick little promotion, like offer some one-on-one consulting in order to generate some quick revenue in order to pay for, let's say, a contractor that I want to work on this or that. So I feel like we can always be a little bit resourceful in order to get the support we need for a big project. Are you going to be fully staffed and totally excited about the team you've created if you have a tiny, tiny budget? Of course not. We work with what we've got. But I do want to challenge you if you think it needs to just be you because you do not have the funds to have a small team then I want you to get more resourceful about how you could get a small team during a promotion and what you can do in order to pay for what you need. So there's options out there. Okay, so that's my little challenge to you. So let's talk about how the Scrum works. First, you've got the project backlog, and that's what the project owner creates, and it's all the tasks that you can think of that will go into your promotion that you're creating or the launch or whatever project you are putting together, that's your backlog, all the tasks that need to get done. And then you have what is called sprint planning. And sprint planning is deciding, okay, what inside that backlog are we going to focus on during a small sprint? And usually a sprint is one week. So you plan on what you're going to focus on based on the backlog for one week. And so once you plan that, it's called the sprint planning. Now you've got the sprint where you work as a team for one week. And then that's all you're focusing on is what you've decided in the planning. And that's your whole week. And then during that whole week, you have daily scrums. And the daily scrums are 15 minute check-in calls that you do with your team. And we'll talk about all of this. And then once that week is over, you do a sprint review, what worked, what didn't work, what needs to be tweaked, and then you're off to your next sprint. So the beauty of Scrum is you're working inside really small sprints. So you look at that backlog and when you see mine, you're going to be like, whoa, that is a lot of stuff. And it would have totally overwhelmed my team if we looked at the backlog and we said, all right, everyone dive in, let's get it done. But we don't do it that way. We say, okay, what are we going to work on this week? Let's only focus on these tasks. And then we're going to come together next week and choose more tasks to work on until we complete the project. So that's the beauty of it, these sprints. So let's talk a little bit about the project backlog. So I look at the project backlog as the roadmap for you to follow in order to get the job done. So if you look at it as a roadmap, it's everything you need to do to get from here to there. And a scrum project is driven by a product vision compiled by the product owner and expressed in the product backlog. So I'm going to read that one more time. A scrum project 
is driven by a product vision compiled by the product owner, which is likely you, and expressed in the product backlog. And the product backlog is a prioritized list of what's required, ranked in the order of value to your business. And the highest value items are at the top of the list. So once you do a total brain dump and get everything in that backlog, then I want you to start prioritizing what needs to get done first. And you put those at the top of the list. Now, the great thing is the product backlog evolves over the lifetime of the project. It's ever changing and items are continuously added, removed and reprioritized. So the way our backlog looks on day one of us preparing for a big launch looks very different on the final day. So when we're done with this promotion, when we look back on our backlog, it will have changed. Uh, We will have taken some things out, added some things and moved some things around. So you can definitely treat that backlog as something that is fluid, but at the same time, you want to really use it strictly. Like if anything changes, it's got to go in that backlog. And I'll tell you some tools we use in order to keep our backlog really organized. We'll get there. Now you understand what the backlog is because you have my project plan and you can use that as a guide. The next thing you want to focus on is the sprint. So scrum structures, product development in cycles of work called sprints. And usually they're about one to four weeks in length, but I really want to suggest you start out with just one week sprints in the beginning, shorter sprints, are really valuable because people don't get lost in the weeds and and you always have a really good pulse on what's going on. So the sprints are a fixed duration and end on a specific date, whether or not the work has been completed and they are never extended. So what that means is if we start a sprint and say, okay, it ends on September 1, when September 1 comes around, whether or not people have gotten their tasks completed, that sprint is over. And let's say that there's a handful of people that didn't get some projects done. Well, it's a really good time then to reevaluate and say, okay, so what's not working here? And you start over on September 2nd. You don't extend them. So what's really valuable is the sprint planning that comes before each sprint. So at the beginning of each sprint, the sprint planning meeting takes place and the product owner and the scrum team, they review the product backlog discuss the goals and say, okay, what are we going to do now? Here is where I adapt things. Usually what happens is I am the product owner. And of course I've got a scrum master. Usually it's the two of us that look at the backlog. And here's why your scrum team is likely a bunch of contractors, maybe a VA, maybe project manager who's acting as your scrum master. So they wouldn't even be considered part of the scrum team. Cause remember you've got the project owner, the scrum team, the scrum master. So the way I plan my sprint planning meetings or the way I do my sprint planning meetings is that I meet with my scrum master. That might be cheating, but it's worked really well for us. So it's just me, my scrum master. We decide what's going to get done that week. We communicate it to everybody else. And that's when the sprint starts. Now, one more adaptation is that Sometimes the way we've worked with sprints is we have done sprints for pre, live, and post with my promotions. So sometimes our sprints are as long as four weeks instead of one week. And here's why. When I do any kind of promotion, we work a whole heck of a lot in the pre phase, which is pre promotion. So I'm creating my product. I'm working with my team on all the marketing materials. We're getting emails written. We're getting sales pages created. You'll see it in my project plan that I've given you. And so we do a whole sprint for pre, which might take up to a month. And then we do another sprint where it's live. And so the live promotion is going on. And usually it will be about two weeks to 20 days. That's the longest promotion I've ever done is 20 days. And that's the Profit Lab. So that's another sprint for us. And then you've got the post sprint, which is usually about a week where we kind of clean up everything that we've done. We redirect sales pages. We redirect webinar registration pages. We're just making sure that all the loose ends are now tied now that we're done selling. 
So a sprint for me is pre, live, and post. And I have done weekly long sprints, but for me, it's just based on how I do my promotions that pre, live, and post has worked really well. So just kind of wanted to throw that out there. Again, I promised you, and I see it as my job to show you how it works inside of a small business, and that tends to work really well for us. Now, let's talk about the daily scrum, because now you understand what the backlog looks like and what those sprints look like and how I've adapted them in my own promotions. And now let's talk about the most powerful thing that I've ever walked away with in terms of scrum, and that is the daily scrum. So the daily scrum is the daily check-in. So once the sprint has started, the scrum team engages in the daily stand-up meetings. I call them the daily scrums. And this is a short 15-minute meeting. And what's really important is you're not supposed to go over 15 minutes. Now, my team and I are not that great at that because I like to chit-chat, so I need to kind of stop that. Because the thing is, if people know it's just 15 minutes, they're really productive on those calls. And basically, it looks like this. Okay, what are you working on? What have you gotten done? What do you need help with? Boom, we're in and we're out. So 15 minutes should be just what you need. Now, in the Scrum book, you'll learn that everyone on the team attends the daily calls. We do not do it that way in my small business. At this meeting, basically, we have the Scrum master, me, the project owner, and then one person on the Scrum team, which in my case is my VA. So Travinia plays a lot of roles inside of the project management inside of that backlog. She's doing a lot of those pieces and she is talking to a lot of the contractors as is our scrum master. So our scrum master is talking to a lot of the contractors. Travinia is part of the team and she's working with a lot of the contractors. So both of those girls have a very good pulse on what's going on. So when we come together daily, they kind of represent everybody else. It would be really weird if I had every day my designer get on with us or my programmer or just anyone else that's working inside of my project because they're not full time. So it's a lot to ask a contractor, hey, can you drop everything for 15 minutes every morning while we have a scrum meeting? It just wouldn't make sense. I just don't think it's fair if they're not full time. So because of that, it's me, the scrum master and one person on the scrum team who's part of my team and and knows kind of everything that's going on because that's just the nature of a VA role. So that's how it works for us. And we get on there and we are really efficient, except for my little chit chat when I want to talk about other things. And there are three words that are brought up or focused on during a daily scrum. The words done, the word plan, and the word problems. So what have you gotten done? What are you planning to get done? And where are you having any problems? So when we do that, everyone is very clear on what's going on. And the scrum master might say, okay, well, Jessica, our designer, this is what she's gotten done. And this is what she's planning on doing for the next day or so. But here's where we have a problem, Amy. We need your input here or here. Or we have a problem because she cannot get everything done by the end of the week. So this is where we're going to focus. So those are the types of conversations we have for 15 minutes every single day. And these calls usually start when we go about two weeks before we go live. So let's pretend, and this is another adaptation. So let's pretend that my sprint for pre, pre pre-promotion, so we're not promoting yet, we're getting ready to promote. Let's say that sprint is a month long. So usually we'll go ahead and do our sprint for two weeks and we won't do those daily calls. We check in about once a week with each other. But once we get two weeks away from going live, we start those scrum calls every single day, Monday through Friday. So you can decide when you need to start the daily check-in calls, but usually it's when you're getting closer to actually going live with a big promotion. And then once a sprint is done, we do a review and usually it's the same group. My scrum master, Travinia, who's part of the scrum team and she's my VA and then me. And we come together, what worked, what didn't work. We have a Google doc and we just document everything that we need to change next time or that we had a problem with or any good ideas. So we just put it in there. And then when everything is over, 
we'll do a final review where we'll come back to that Google Doc and kind of organize it so we can use that information for the next launch. Now, as you can see, I just went through everything. You've got your backlog and your sprints and your daily scrums. That's really what's involved in scrumming a project. Now, does it look perfect inside my team? Heck no. However, it has been dramatically powerful in terms of making things work really, really well. Now, I want to give you some tips for that backlog because this is the most important piece of the puzzle and basically it's going to be you most likely. If you're listening, I'm going to guess that you're going to be the person creating the backlog. So one thing I want you to do is document all ideas. When you sit down, I want you to give yourself a few hours, take a few breaks during those hours, but give yourself a few hours to create that backlog and document every idea that comes to your mind. Now, I like to do it old school style where I get a big poster board and a bunch of markers and just go to town. And I start that way. And then from there, I'll take everything and put it into an online tool. We use Asana, A-S-A-N-A. So Asana is our project management online tool. And that's where we manage every scrum we do. I've heard rumors, though, that Trello is better. T-R-E-L-L-O. We are not willing to change because it took us long enough to get my entire team using Asana every single day. That was like a big task. So I don't want to switch to Trello. However, if I was starting over, I might look into Trello because I heard that once you understand Scrum, Trello looks a lot like a Scrum board because what you'll learn inside the book, and I'm not teaching you everything, so definitely pick up that book, but basically you're moving things from the backlog, you're moving them over to the sprint. And then when they're done, once you go through the sprint and you complete them, you're moving them to a done folder. So Trello, I guess, allows you to kind of move things more visually. And then my assistant Travinia told me about Workboard. So W-O-R-K-B-O-A-R-D. And Workboard is supposed to be really cool and kind of looks like a scrum board as well. So Asana, Trello, and Workboard are three different um, online tools that you might want to use because you do need to put your backlog into some kind of project management tool online so that all of the players can be a part of it because we did get my designer into Asana. We do have my programmers in Asana. So people are working with us inside of Asana. So whatever you use, I do feel like your contractors need to agree to come in there with you. Like Basecamp is another one. I mean, there's no right or wrong. You just got to find a tool that your team will actually use. I think that's the biggest battle. At least it was for me. So because everyone has different ideas and personalities and ways they like to use tools and you've got to get everyone on the same table and you're the boss. So you get to choose which one's going to work best for you. So that's what you want to do there. And also another thing that I like to do inside of that tool inside of Asana is that we break things up into categories. So let's say there's a bunch of tasks for Facebook ads, writing the copy, getting the images created, deciding on who we're targeting. So that might be a category, Facebook advertising. Another category might be sales page. Another category might be promotional emails. Another one might be um, live webinar. So all the tasks are broken up into categories just so we can easily find them. And then once we get them into categories, we then move things into phases, like what's going to be the live phase, or I should back up, what's going to be the pre-phase, so that's going to be our sprint, and then the live phase, which is our next sprint, and then the post phase, which is our final sprint. So we then break things up into phases, and then we decide on who's doing what and when things are going to be due. So you might not have due dates on everything, but you do need to find which tasks are the most important to get done first so you can go and start your first sprint. So I think that's the most important. So don't kill yourself with trying to put a due date on everything in the beginning if you're new to this, but find the things that need to get done right away. And also do not totally sabotage yourself and give yourself like two weeks to finish a project that probably should take 30 days. So that's another thing as entrepreneurs, we try to do way too much. And I'm speaking from the heart here because I do it all the time. But one thing that saves my sanity is if I give my team enough time to get it done without killing them. Now, in full disclosure, the recent promotion that we're in, Webinars That Convert, I had to start everything from scratch. And 
really, I give all of you a shout out that are working on your very first project or program. Let's say you've never created an online product before and you're doing it now. It is like birthing a child because (laughs) it is just really, really hard starting from scratch, not knowing what to do, when to do it, how to do it and figuring out as you go is really daunting. So I just want to tell you, I get it. And I know that's not easy. And I recently had to start from scratch with webinars that convert. I didn't have a product. Like literally we had nothing. We had no membership site. We had no sales page. We had no emails written. And it's been a long time since I've started from scratch. I've been doing the profit lab for years now. So every time I just get to refine it and make it better. So anyway, my point being, I was going to give you my full disclosure here, that it was really difficult getting webinars that convert fully finished. And I know I stressed out my team with it. There was a lot of things I just wanted to do that it just was really important to me that it was included in this product, which meant probably more work for my team. I wish we had started it a whole month earlier. So if you're ever beating yourself up because you're trying to cram it all in and you're thinking like, why did I do this again? Just know that I'm years into my business and I did it again. I should have given us a little bit more time for sure. Plus, one thing as entrepreneurs, we need to be creative. If you're creating content, you need that space to be creative. You need some white space around you in terms of not pushing everything back to back to back so you can't even breathe. And so I was creating this product from scratch and inside webinars that convert. If you're a member, you know, there's a lot of videos in there and I did it in a way that was really organized. So I say that there's five phases to every webinar system. So the program is broken up into these five phases and then I get into detail with each training video for each of the phases. That was a lot of research, a lot of work, a lot of time recording and creating and all that. So if I push myself to have to get it done quickly, I'll lose the creativity. So I had to like say to my team, I can't work on a million other things right now. I can only work on this. What that meant is they need to pick up more slack because I couldn't do it. I had to focus on the program. If I had given myself a little bit more time, it wouldn't have felt that stressful to everybody. So it's all a learning process. And I always like to throw that out there because at the beginning of this podcast, I tell you, you know, we've sold 651 memberships into webinars that convert in less than a week. That's amazing. That's awesome. And I'm really proud of it. But I also want to tell you, it really stressed me out. I really was up against a wall to make sure it got done properly and on time. And it maxed out my team because I didn't build in as much time as I wanted to. And the reason I didn't build in as much time is I forgot that when you're starting from scratch, it's a whole different ball game. And just, there's so many things that just are not done. So I'll jump off this little soapbox, but I want you to give yourself a little breathing room if you can. You know, it's you that are pushing for those deadlines. So we need to remember who's the boss here. That's you. So if you need to give yourself more time, then you're just going to give yourself more time. And and I've learned my lesson for sure. I really am praying that I do not do that again. (laughs) It was really, really tough. So there's my little pep talk for you. I hope that you are at least now interested in thinking about scrumming your next project. And when you do, I want you to remember as you start, the most important thing is that backlog. And as you start to put together that backlog, all your tasks will take longer than you think they should take. It's just how life is, I think. And so give yourself a little cushion if needed. Also, when you're creating that backlog, you're going to discover new things that you want to add to it. Allow yourself to be flexible, but also let's say you're right in the middle of putting together your project, your backlog's done, you're doing your daily sprints and or your weekly sprints and you've got things moving. If something comes up like a new idea or, oh, we should have done it this way, we should have done it that way, table some of that stuff to the next time you do that promotion. Because if you follow the way I teach things, I always want you to rinse and repeat. So whatever you create here, I want you to do it again, let's say months down the road or once a year or whatever. So the next time you do this promotion, then you can add some of those bells and whistles that you might think about while you're in the middle of your project. So there was one idea that I had, I won't share it yet because it's a secret, it's gonna be really good, that I'll eventually add to webinars that convert. Now it's lifetime access, so whoever already purchased, they'll get this little extra thing I thought about, But my team said, okay, Amy, that's a great idea. We love it, 
but there's no way we can get that done if you want to hit this deadline. So let's put that into phase two. It was hard, let me tell you, but I definitely tabled it until the next time we promote and then everybody who already bought will get the benefit plus the new members. So I I think I was okay because I knew people had lifetime access. Also, when you mix up your communication during any process, not just scrumming, but anything you do, it will cost you money. So if you don't take the time to communicate to your team, this is how I want it done and this is how you do it. And let me give you an example. If you don't do that kind of thing, It's going to cost you money because they're going to do it wrong. So as the leader of your team, that project owner that has the vision, if there are some people that need extra training, I want you to make sure that's happening. Whether you communicate to the scrum master that, hey, I want you to make a video for this person and that person showing exactly how it's done. We use Jing and Snagit in my business all the time. Like I bet I make a new Snagit video for someone on my team every single day. And that video is something like, hey, you see on our blog post how we're doing it this way because it's just a screen, um, it's not a screen grab. You can do screen grabs, but I'm talking about I'll make a video and they see my computer screen and hear my voice. That's what I'm talking about. And I'll say, hey, you see this blog post? Well, I don't like when it's like this and I'd really love to see it like this. And next time we do it, can you make sure we follow this process or whatever? But if they have a video, they really get it. When you're scrumming and you are working with a lot of contractors, make sure you are making those short little videos and showing people exactly what you want them to do. It's not fair to assume that they can read your mind. So if you're not making these Jing, Jing is like a free version of Snagit, so Jing or Snagit. But if you're not making these little Snagit videos almost daily as you're working with a big team, if someone someone needs to be making them, whether it's you or someone on the team or your scrum master, then there's probably going to be a breakdown in communication. So that's just one thing to think about. And the final thing I'll add here is that you do need to think about what's not going to get done when you are in the middle of a scrum project. Because when you are scrumming, a lot of things will not get your attention. Now, of course, you got to keep the business running. So for me, I still needed to get my podcast done. And I still had some commitments with some interviews I said I would do or some blog posts that I committed to getting done. So there were smaller things that I needed to do. But the bulk of my attention for the last probably month and a half has been all about webinars that convert. What that meant for me and my team is that I had to say no to a lot. One of my mentors, Marie Forleo, says, get on the no train. And that is so true. You need to feel comfortable saying no because, and it's easier to say no though, because you have something in front of you that's so very important and you have multiple people now working on it. When you're doing daily scrums, checking in with your team, and you've put the money out to hire a scrum master and you know that you've got multiple people working on something really important, it's easier to say no because you have this really clear vision. So if you've ever struggled with saying no, once you get your scrum going, I promise you it's going to get easier. I read this quote recently that the word N-O with a period is a complete sentence, meaning you don't need to add much more to it. No is no when it comes to no, I can't do that blog post right now, or no, I can't go on that networking trip, or no, I'm not going to you know, say yes to this great opportunity that looks so good because I've got a vision. And I'm very clear what that vision looks like, what's involved in that vision, the backlog, and where we're going because I have someone leading it, the scrum master. So when that, when that all falls into place, let me tell you, it's so much easier to focus on what really matters. And many of you have told me time and time again that you struggle with focusing on projects in your business, that you feel pulled in a million directions and everything gets a little piece of your attention, but nothing gets your full attention. When you start scrumming, I'm telling you, 80, 85, maybe even 90% of your attention goes into that scrum and that feels really good. It feels really good to focus on almost one thing. We can't say 100% one thing, but almost one thing for a period of time. And then you know, once that scrum is over, like I am well aware, September 21st, this scrum is done. The live scrum is done. We go into post for really, for me, it's just going to be a few days and then I'm done. And I can move on to something else. And in between, I'm going to take a big break. That's another thing. You need to celebrate when you're done with a big scrum project because that is a huge accomplishment. So I want you to take a deep breath and think, 
<sighs> okay, we just went over a lot. Scrumming's kind of intense and it's dramatically changed my business. So if it feels overwhelming to you just now, I want you to first commit to going through the book, grabbing the PDF. You can get both at amyporterfield.com forward slash 75. And then I'm going to help you with a model of that backlog. If you go to amyporterfield.com forward slash 62 download, you can get my project plan, which is my backlog. And that will help you really see what it looks like. And it will jar your ideas and inspiration and memory into what goes into your own project. So I think it's going to help you immensely. So focus on that backlog and then you can start pulling everything together. So I cannot wait to hear about all of your big successes with Scrum. So keep me updated. I'm really looking forward to hearing about your big successes with Scrum. And finally, I want to thank our sponsor, 99designs. Now, you know, when you market online, it's really difficult to stand out from all of that online noise clutter. So how do you do it? Well, I think you do it through impeccable branding, and that includes your logo, your social media cover images, your website, and everything in between. At 99designs, you can get anything designed in just a week for a startup friendly price. So to give you a little something extra, when you go to 99designs.com forward slash Amy, you'll get a $99 upgrade for free. That upgrade makes your design contest stand out from all the others and bumps you to the top of the list so more designers can see your contest. So make sure to check out 99designs.com forward slash Amy. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in today and I cannot wait to connect with you again soon. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast at www.amyporterfield.com. 